Good evening, everyone. I'd like to welcome you to the regular meeting of the Asheville City Council for April the 9th, 2003. If you can just take a moment to look at your phone to ensure that it's either on off, silent, or vibrate, so it will not disrupt the meeting. Thank you so very much. The first order of business tonight is our Pledge of Allegiance. I know we have some little people who know the Pledge of Allegiance. I don't know if you want to join me. You want to lead the Pledge of Allegiance tonight? Come on. Go right ahead. I pledge allegiance, allegiance to the flag of the United States, States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Now you want to say your name in the microphone? My name is Frida. Would you like to say your name? Not today. Go ahead. Tell me your name. Not today. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Give him a hand. Surprise, she's on. Tonight's invocation will be given by Councilman Pelly. Thank you, Mayor. Heavenly Creator, acknowledging we are imperfect vessels of your divine inspiration, please grant us the wisdom to serve the people of Asheville with caring hearts and open minds. Please extend your grace on our efforts at self-governance and help us make decisions that represent the public interest and that move our community forward in practical and sustainable ways. We seek your guidance in listening to the public to help us distill essential messages to help us create policy that serves the greater community. Please give our community as a whole the wisdom to protect and the strength to defend those who would seek to undermine and contract core democratic values. We thank you for all that you have provided to us and pledge that today in this room we shall seek to follow the path of truth and honor. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Council, we have several things under proclamations and before we go into them, um, I do want to acknowledge a couple of things on our agenda that um, have changed since we published the agenda. The business improvement district will be delayed and the living wage issue will be delayed as well. And so we'll address those issues on the consent agenda. Um, do we need a motion as part of that? No. No motion? Okay. So those items, if you are here to speak on those issues, they have been delayed and we will not discuss those issues tonight. Another thing was added to our consent agenda, and it's, the item to, it's a resolution to authorize the mayor to accept the grant award offer from the U.S. Economic Development Administration for the Craven Streets Improvement Project in the amount of $1,122,401. And so that's a resolution on the consent agenda, and that's different from what was published on Friday. We have some good news. We'd like to recognize a couple of people, or it's more than a couple, quite a few people for the great work that helped make the Southern Conference happen. And so I'm gonna call some people up and we want you to come forward so our community can recognize you for another successful event. I think I need to start off with our own Councilman Jan Davis, and I know he'll speak to this issue in just a minute, but we appreciate all that he has done. But I'll, say again. I do. Go down there so okay. you can shake your hand officially. Oh, right. <laughs> Doesn't follow directions, man. <laughs> Next is Ben Van Camp, Adrian Vasallo, Allison Moore, Austin Tyler, Bruce Peterson, Carol Peterson, Chris Coral, Dan Dover, Dan Hawk, Desiree Mustrol, Diana Jackson Pierce. Dodie Stevens, Greg Duff, Janet Cohn, Janet Lampkin, Tim Lampkin, Jeff Richardson, John Pierce, John Creighton, John Yarbrough, Kay Ray Bailey, Lauren Cooper McDevitt, Lou Bissett, Lynn Glazier, 
and I probably messed it up, Lynn, I'm sorry. Mary Helen Letterly, Mike Burke, Ron Stordo, Sam Powers, Jonathan Bailey, and Nancy, Nancy Rye. Okay, how many names did I mess up? I see you're laughing. But before I go down and officially shake their hands, um, for our community, we had, I think, a large number of individuals who came out to the game, but these are the individuals who helped secure the rooms to make sure that the fans had a wonderful experience, made sure the facilities were in order, uh, made sure that the ticket sales went ahead of schedule, made sure we had sponsors so the city wouldn't have to tow the freight, the entire freight. They volunteered to deal with logistics, dealing with parking, working with staff, <coughs> making sure the banners were right, making sure they came down, things of that nature. Every little logistical thing to make sure the Southern Conference went off without a hitch. These individuals were meeting on a regular basis to make sure that happened. Additionally, um, speaking with the director of the SOCON, he's already said, you know, we're ready to talk about future years in Asheville. We know Asheville will do a good job of putting another bid in, and it's because of this team. And so I want us to stand and recognize this team because we had an unprecedented weekend. We had a record number of people downtown spending money in and throughout our community because of this team. Thank you so very much. Thank you, Mayor. I, I really do, on behalf of the uh, local organizing committee, want to thank the, the city of Asheville and all of Asheville's citizens. It, it's been a great time. The uh, second year of the SOCON, I think, was even better than the first. And if you were downtown on Saturday morning and you watched uh, 300 kids dribbling basketball from Pack Square to the Civic Center, and a couple of adults, and there, there was one very prominent adult in that league. It was, it was just an amazing occasion and the, the enthusiasm by the whole community was, was terrific and I think next year will even be better because that's when we're going to be starting to work toward getting a, an extension with those folks and, and this is a great economic uh, development tool. It, it makes a, a community happy watching and being part of March Madness and it, uh, it gives you a whole new perspective of uh, college student athletes and uh, th or gives the community a, a view. We're very fortunate to have a uh, sports commission here and Ben Van Camp, uh, he's been just stellar and this is his life, putting these kind of events on and we've got a lot of other ones coming up. Uh, Janet Cohn, the athletic director of uh, University of North Carolina at Asheville was instrumental in putting that together so there are a lot of people at that table and it's, it's invigorated a whole community and, and, and gotten a tremendous amount of enthusiasm for college athletics in this area. And I, so I appreciate that for, on behalf of the uh, sports, uh, sports Commission, the local organizing commission or committee of the Southern Conference. All these things have, have just huge community partnerships with the county, the city. It's been a, a great bringing together of people. So thank you, Mayor, for recognizing this. Mayor's going to let me speak. Um, thank you so much. I want to particularly thank, because it seems like yesterday, but now it's been a couple years ago, that we came to the city council and to the mayor and said, we got a dream about a little sports commission. And, I, and you're seeing that sports commission in action, so I want to personally thank you for supporting it. Jan's right. We've got a great leader, Ben Van Camp not just about the Southern Conference, but many other events that are coming to Asheville. This is a great team of people. So I want to particularly thank the mayor and the city council for your support. And Ben Van Camp, everybody should thank him. He really makes this happen. Thank you. Thank you. This is when I turn all red. Uh, but uh, this group here is, is just a sample of the, the team of 30 or 40 people that really work year round to put that event on and uh, I'm just so thankful and humble to be able to be part of that and, and, and appreciate all their energy. Uh, two other groups I want to thank. One is City Council. 
Um, you guys were there. Uh, I think just about all of you came and, and you were there and you, you, you shook hands and you met people from the schools and, and you don't know how much that means to them to see that high level of support from the city. Um, so I'm very appreciative of that. And then uh, lastly, the city staff. Um, I cannot say enough about uh, being able to work with them in, in a true partnership that exists between the, the commission and the staff in putting these events on from, from the staff at the U.S. Cellular Center to uh, folks in transportation and, and Ken and Harry and all those folks. Uh, it, it is a, a full team effort and uh, I'm just very appreciative for their support and, and their assistance. So, thank you. And Ben's recognition of the staff is a great segue into the next item on the agenda, but I think Mr. Jackson actually wanted to do that. Um, Jeff, did you want to wait or go ahead and go forward with it? Here, we're prepared to move forward. I'm not exactly sure what time Gary will be here. He could be here any minute or it could be as long as 30 to 45. He so said, with he your said it's going to be a little while. He said, I can see the mountains. So. With your permission, we'd like to go ahead and proceed, if that's okay. okay. That'll be fine. And I'd like to turn it over and recognize Mr. David Bailey, who's here this evening. Uh, as president and CEO of United Way, if David could come forward. And I think he's got a special presentation to make to the city of Asheville this evening uh, for this year's United Way campaign. And, and David, thank you so much for being here. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you, Mayor and members of City Council. Um, uh -huh. I'm here uh, with my colleagues, uh, Kevin Montgomery, our campaign director, Kevin, and Richard Cairo, who works on our campaign staff. Come on up. And it's Scott, if you don't mind, come on up on behalf of the employees. Mayor Bellamy, may I, may I read the names uh, yes. in addition to Mr. Burnett? Scott Burnett, uh, our city's campaign chair this year for the city of Asheville. I would love for additional city staff who have been able to come over this afternoon. I'll read your names. And if you're here, could you please come up front to join the team? Lieutenant Mike Yelton, Janet Lampkin. Brad Stein, David Carr, Pam Kelly, Jessica Bernstein, Alina Law, Laura Morgan, Ron Kearns, Christy Bass, and Scott Barnwell. Mayor, thank you so much for the opportunity for us to invite these folks up front. And uh, these, are th these are the team leaders from the various departments. And Mr. Bailey, I'll turn it back over to you. Thank, thank you. Um, what a great team. Uh, we're here to really, uh, our message is simple, um, to say thank you to the employees of the city of Asheville, who was just an outstanding United Way campaign last fall. It was so outstanding, in fact, that we nominated the city of Asheville uh, for a, an award that's given out among competition among United Ways across the whole state. Um, the city did such a great job that we put them up against other campaigns across the state. And in February of this year, Chief Burnett came to the United Way of North Carolina annual meeting and was given, on behalf of the city, the Spirit of North Carolina Excellence Award for campaign excellence. So congratulations to the city of Asheville and its employees for such a great job. And it's really recognition of two things. One is the numbers. We all know about numbers. But equally, in fact, more important was how you did the campaign. It was the way you, how you engaged the employees, involved them, made it fun, built some camaraderie on what, you know, is important in our community and you did such a great job. Let me give you a couple examples. One is uh, they resurrected a chili cook-off uh, led by Chief Burnett and, and uh, Chief Anderson to sort of build that team spirit and I think you actually had participation from other public officials in the in the community and it built camaraderie, some cu culinary arts and also created a little bit of heartburn because of all the uh, all the offerings. Part of that, another part of that was Turn out for your teen spirit. Wear your colors, your favorite colors. And um, that was a great event. It was a great morale booster for the campaign and for the city. A special part of that was um, if enough people turned out, Ken Putnam would turn, go from wearing Wolfpack Red to Carolina Blue. <laughs> well, you blew by your numbers, and on that very day, we have pictures of Ken Putnam uh, uh, just terribly upset about having to wear Carolina blue instead of their Wolfpack red. And, um, 
In fact, we were so moved at United Way for his sacrifice that at our annual meeting uh, in February that we gave Ken the I'll Do Anything for United Way Award because of his great sacrifice. Wow. Uh, so that's just a couple examples about how you engage folks. Also, you did speakers and tours and really got folks involved with, with United Way, and that was great. And food was also evident at the Sam Powers did something at Cellular Center for us. Pancake cookout, uh, pancake cook, uh, uh, pancake breakfast, and some other things. It was really was just a great event, and the volunteers did a great job. And in fact, your volunteers do a great job all the time. We partnered on day caring this year again with uh, Project Connect outreach to the homeless. How we launched our day caring this year. We also partnered with the city on various sites around the community and involved other businesses on that. So we really did a nice job. So thank you on behalf of. United Way of Asheville, Buncombe County, our board, and most importantly, the 70,000 people whose lives are changed because of this great partnership. So, last thing I'll do is, and, and Chief Burnett understands this, there's actually an award someplace, I don't know where that's that award at, that actually award that uh, um, we'll, we'll, we have someplace. But one thing we do whenever we have great things happen at United Way during the middle campaign is we ring the cowbell. So, I'm ringing the cowbell for the City of Asheville and its outstanding campaign. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Council. Uh, very proud of City of Asheville employees. I, I think that this recognition from the United Way and the success of the campaign speaks volumes about our city employees. And, and really shows that uh, public service for City of Asheville employees truly is more than a job. It, it truly is a way of life. Uh, our partnership with United Way and our city employees every single day during the work day providing service to our community and then going above and beyond that uh, partnering with United Way so that uh, so much more can be done for our community. So. Uh, Thank you uh, for this recognition. Thank you for this time, Mayor and Council. And uh, it, it certainly is an honor to, to be a City of Asheville employee. So thank you. Thank you, David. We've never had a cloud bell rung here. Have you, have you, have you, have you, would you like to ring it? No, thank you. It's <laughs> <laughs> against the rules. But no. <laughs> We have some other great news happening within our community, and I'm going to recognize some events happening or months. We're going to recognize some months, and I wanted to do the, all three of these personally because this is the last time I get to do them as mayor, and um, I've had an opportunity of doing this for many years, especially with Bill McGuire, so it's very heartfelt for me. So I'd like to call Bill up, and we're going to recognize April 2013 as Child Abuse Awareness Month. Thank you, Mayor Bellany. It's always been such a pleasure. Council and staff, too. This proclamation reads. What a city, that what we just heard. I mean, wow. Thank you. Thank you. Great employees. Whereas the problem of child abuse and neglect affects many of our children and has reached epidemic, epidemic proportions, with over 5 million children reported as abused or neglected every year in the United States, and over 125,000 in North Carolina and 3,985 in Buncombe County last year. Whereas North Carolina faces a continuing need to support innovative programs to prevent child abuse and to assist parents and family members when, ch when child abuse occurs. Whereas working to prevent child abuse and neglect is the responsibility of all citizens. Whereas every child has a right to a safe, healthy, nurturing environment and whereas community action is needed to help prevent child abuse so that all children can have the opportunity to reach their potential. Now therefore I, Terry Bellamy, Mayor of the City of Asheville, do hereby proclaim April as Child Abuse Prevention Month in the City of Asheville and call upon every citizen to recognize the important work of the Child Protection Team of Buncombe County and Child Abuse Prevention Services and to work diligently to prevent child abuse and neglect. It has the city seal and my signature making it official. Thank you, Mayor Bellamy. And if you could just tell about what you're we, doing. We this have time. been doing this a few years, and you know it'd be great one year if we don't have to do it. That would be the best of all possible worlds. As, uh, as the mayor read, the numbers are still staggering. But the successes are many, whether it's uh, children in our school base, prevention, personal safety program, 
who learn the skills to protect themselves and to avoid or get out of an abusive situation. Or a child who raises a hand to disclose abuse and it stops. They come to us for counseling, the hurt stops and the hope and the healing begins. Uh, uh, we've, uh, we, we're really excited this April. We're kicking off a new program, Stewards of Children. This is a child sexual abuse prevention training for adults program. And the first folks we're going to do it with are all the Asheville City Schools, counselors and social workers, and also the Buncombe County Schools, counselors and social workers. So we're really excited about that. A few things happening, uh, a, a Friday, this Friday night is Blue Ribbon Night at the Tourist. We'll be handing out blue ribbons at the gate and going out on the field before the game, a couple little people to pin a big uh, blue ribbon on Teddy Tourist. April 17th uh, at the United Way building, my good friend and landlord, David Bailey back there, <laughs> uh, we're going to have the film Searching for Angela Shelton. This is kind of neat. Angela Shelton is a Nashville native. A mom, Joanne Shelton, still lives here. And it's a documentary film where she took off across the country in an RV for a year. And the idea at first was just to search for other Angela Sheltons by name. But she was amazed to find out that so many of them had also experienced childhood sexual abuse, as had she. So it shifted gears. She then, as part of the journey, confronted her father, who had been her abuser, and it ends on a high note, kind of her triumph over her childhood sexual abuse. April uh, 20th, pause for kids, walking together to protect children and animals at Lake Tomahawk in Black Mountain with the Asheville Humane Society and the Animal Compassion Network. Part of the idea here, and a lot of people don't realize, that there were laws in this country to protect animals long before there was anything to protect children. April 29th, the YMI Cultural Center, there's a forum on child abuse, domestic violence, and sexual assault. And there are a lot of good things happening in our community. Uh, like everywhere, we still have child abuse, but there are a lot of good things happening. It's all about awareness, uh, about increasing reporting, increasing folks getting involved in prevention, and demonstrating a community commitment to protect all children. Thank you all so much. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Next, we're going to recognize April 2013 as Autism Awareness Month, and Joe Yercheck is going to come forward. Welcome, Joe. And this proclamation reads, April is Aut Autism Awareness Month, when the public is encouraged to learn more about autism and the resources available to help individuals and families affected by the disorder. Whereas autism spectrum disorder is a lifelong developmental disability that typically appears during the first three years of life, there are nearly 60,000 individuals with autism in North Carolina and more than 1.5 million people with ASD in the United States. Whereas the Centers for Disease Control estimates that autism affects 1 in 88 children nationally, a jump of 23% since the last estimate, estimate two years ago. And in North Carolina, the rate of prevalence is even higher, estimated to be 1 in 70. And whereas autism affects every school, community, and local economy in North Carolina, and providing the appropriate resources for individuals with autism ensures that they will enjoy a better quality of life and improves the probability that they will become active, productive members of society. Whereas necessary services for children include early intervention, educational options, and speech and behavioral therapies. And necessary services for adults with autism include vocational assistance, social skills and training, and housing. Now therefore I, Terry Bellamy, Mayor of the City of Asheville, do hereby proclaim April 2013 as Autism Awareness Month in the City of Asheville and encourage all citizens to learn more about autism and what they can do to advocate for individuals on the autism spectrum and to support their families. It has the city seal, my signature, making it official. Thank you so much. And if you want to talk about the things coming up this week and next week. Sure. 
Um, the Autism Society of North Carolina uh, provides supports and promotes opportunities which enhance the lives of individuals on the autism spectrum and their families. Um, the numbers are staggering and are even more staggering for North Carolina schools. The most recent number from North Carolina schools is one in 54 kids that are of school age have, are diagnosed on the autism spectrum. Um, we provide advocacy, residential services, uh, we provide um, education, training for families, and also for the community, for local fire departments, police departments, on how to work with children and adults on the autism spectrum. We have a supported employment program, which provides training so folks can get work. Um, and we have a licensed after school program on site. We also provide one on one supports within the community and our Sarah Handling Crisis Fund, which assists families through tough times. Um, Coming up, one of the biggest events that we have coming up is our Zipping for Autism, which is uh, done behind, with the Zipline course behind the uh, Crown Plaza in the city of Asheville. Uh, last year, they raised over 40000 for us, uh, and that goes to uh, help support our lowest income families uh, for our sliding fee scale respite scholarship program and our Sarah Hanlon Crisis Fund. Um, and that is on June 2nd, Sunday, June 2nd. So uh, go to zippingforautism.com, get yourself a team going, come out and help support us and have some fun. Thank you for having us. Zip. I'm quite sure he could do it. <laughs> All right, come on out. Thank Zipping you so for very much. <laughs> Lastly, we want to recognize April 21st through the 27th, 2013, as National Volunteer Week, and Charles Lee will receive this proclamation. Proclamation reads, whereas service projects are performed and volunteers are recognized for their commitment to service during National Volunteer Week, whereas the entire community inspire, equip, and mobilize people to take action that changes the world, and whereas volunteers may connect with local community service opportunities through hundreds of different organizations throughout Asheville, whereas the get Whereas the giving of one's time and talents in service to others empowers both the giver and the recipient. And whereas our country's volunteer force of over 63 million is a great treasure. treasure. And whereas volunteers are vital to our future as a caring and productive city. Now therefore, I, Terry Bellamy, Mayor of the City of Asheville, do hereby proclaim April 21st through the 27th, 2013 as Volunteer Week in Asheville and urge citizens to volunteer in their respective communities. By volunteering and by recognizing those who serve, we can replace disconnection and, un and w with understanding and compassion. It has the city seal in my signature, making it official. Thank you Thank so you. much. My pleasure. You want to talk about a couple of things? Yeah, sure. Um, well, thank you, uh, Mayor Bellamy. Thank you, City Council. Um, on behalf of Hands On and United Way, just want to thank you so much for recognizing the spirit of volunteerism here in our community and just, um, yeah, just recognizing the amazing work that volunteers do every day. And that's what our goal is for National Volunteer Week, the 21st to the 27th, is to just recognize and thank uh, volunteers. Um, we'll be having our own volunteer appreciation event for the volunteer leaders that we work with. And so I just want to really thank you. If you're a volunteer, thank you so much. And if you work alongside volunteers or depend on volunteers for the work that you do, just really encourage you to take the opportunity uh, to thank the volunteers that make this community such a, a rich and wonderful place to live. Thank you so much. Is there a number people can call to volunteer? Certainly. Um, Visit handsonashville.org. That's our website. We list volunteer opportunities with nonprofits, schools, civic organizations all throughout Buncombe County, and there's so much to get involved with. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Charles. Council, the next order of business is our consent agenda. Any member of the community wishing to address council with any concerns or questions about any item on the consent agenda, you may step forward at this time. All right, council. Is there a motion to approve or amend the consent agenda? Uh, Mayor, I'd like to make a, um, a motion to amend uh, item 
K on the consent agenda to enable us to schedule another community meeting regarding the budget situation. Okay, and I know we're going to have it in South Asheville, and we'll announce the date as soon as I mean the location as soon as it's confirmed. Okay, and, and uh, April 18th too. April 18th, six o'clock. Okay. All right. So as you make a motion, you have amended it. Is there a second? A second. Any further questions or comments? All in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed, like sign. The motion carries. Uh, Mayor, I'm yes. sorry, I apologize. I, did, I, wasn't, I didn't get the motion. The motion? The Councilman Pelly, and I'm sorry, who seconded it? Who okay. seconded I'm sorry, thank you. Okay. And that was, um, that vote was to amend it. We still need to vote on the Oh, was consent. that just to amend the resolution? That was to amend that? item that was K. The, oh, okay, okay. Um, before we move on, mm -hmm. Mayor, I, I just wanted to say that one of the one of the pieces in the consent agenda is this budget amendment in the amount of eight hundred and thirty nine thousand dollars from the Tourism Development Authority and U.S. Cellular sponsorship revenue for renovations at the U.S. Cellular Center. Just want to express gratitude for everyone who uh, helped to make that happen and who understands that the vision for the for the Civic Center. Is, is a very forward-looking one, and, and that building is piece by piece being transformed into a venue for the present and the future. Okay, thank you very much. Now we need a motion to approve the entire amended consent agenda. So moved. Second. The motion's been made and properly seconded. Any further questions or comments? All in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed, like sign. The motion carries unanimously. We have two presentations this evening. The first one is Asheville Area Riverfront Redevelopment Commission and Ms. Torno will make the presentation. Good evening, Mayor Bellamy, City Council, and City staff, as well as everybody present in the room. I'm, you'll have to excuse me, this is my first time using a PowerPoint here. Okay, so it might be a little. I also, I'm probably going to speak really fast because I've got a lot to share. There's a lot going on, good stuff. Um, I'm not going to speak, I'm going to let you read this and then I'm going to talk about other things. I hope that works for everybody. Asheville is a small town. The beauty of a small town is that we all know each other. You probably know somebody on this list. I would like to take a moment to thank Peter Sprague, who's with me in the audience. One of our, the one other commissioner, um, he's a, an appointee from Riverlink and we appreciate him being here with us tonight. We also would like to thank the city of Asheville and Buncombe County for giving us their ex officio members of the wonderful Jan Davis who has been a, a true asset to our commission and um, in our new commissioner David King who has come with us this year. The AARC leverages these natural networks of everybody coming together to foster new connections and to play matchmaker for the benefit of the regional riverfront along the Swannanoas and French Broad River. The next few slides that you're going to see are our 2012 annual report, and because of the way it was printed, it won't be readable on the PowerPoint. So I'm encouraging anybody who wants to read along with or wants to look at it later to go to avlriverfront.com and click on the Minutes Plus tab. That will give you a copy of, of our annual report. Again, you can see it's quite small and nobody's going to be able to read it. So gives you an opportunity, people at home and everybody in the audience, to be able to see that. The biggest news to hit our riverfront, of course, is New Belgium Brewery coming to the, to the French, banks of the French Broad River. Everybody, including the governor, got involved in that one. So the question is, what did the AERC have to do with it? Back in 2010, an old friend of mine who just happened to work for a, a national kayak manufacturer mentioned that his company was wanting to locate on the Asheville Riverfront. I asked him if we could use his company as a test case um, for the AARC, and this began a journey that ultimately ended up with getting help from the stockyard, getting, ended up helping get the stockyard property, what we call redevelopment ready, so that by the time New Belgium arrived, we actually had a site for them. The other question is, how does this multiply? New Belgium not only is helping redevelop our riverfront, but they helped get a greenway built, as well as some new streetscape on the west banks of the French Broad River. 
but also New Belgium has stepped up in offering some recycled building materials to a new initiative this year that the Asheville Design Center has put forth of their summer intern design build project, a project put forth by the West End Clingman Avenue Neighborhood Association and with support from the AARC. In addition, in light of the current rash of fires in Asheville, um, four in the last 10 days on our riverfront, New Belgian Brewery has set the bar fairly high in their comprehensive and immediate response to these un unforeseen events by physically securing their property as well as providing around-the-clock surveillance on their site. We wish all our properties were this conscientious. The AARC collaborates a lot. Um, the 1430 Riverside Drive project is a really good example of this. When PSNC and Progress Energy donated the properties at 1430 Riverside, the AARC started talking about removing the fence around that property that was helping to make our riverfront look more like a prison than a park. In that conversation, one of our commissioners, Mayor Jerry Vihan, mentioned that the town of Woodfin was needing some fencing for their new auto impound yard. So the long and short is that Woodfin's Public Works Department came in and got the fence at no cost to the city of Asheville, a win for the city of Asheville, a win for the, city of, for the town of Woodfin, and a, and a win for our riverfront. This partner, partnering between municipalities is something that we encourage and, and plan to continue to foster. The AARC also advises. That's part of our job. Um, the Ice House Project is a good example of that. Um, the city of Asheville put up a ton of resources with city legal staff, city real estate staff, planning staff, public works, the homeless coordinator working with APD and AFD to deal with what had become a nightmare scenario. The AARC worked with the River Arts District Business Association, the Western Klingman Avenue Neighborhood Association, <clears throat> as well as the River Arts District artists and made a recommendation to City Council about a positive outcome. The City of Asheville con committed considerable resources so that today this property is no longer a nuisance. A footnote to this whole process, this is what the Ice House looked like as it was being torn down. You can see the little 99 in the background there. A week before the demolition began, <coughs> Old Wood Company received four new pieces of equipment to help them expand their business and it's almost as if they were looking forward to this new sort of a new day down on the river and so we appreciate all of the, imp the input for, from the city of Asheville to make that a reality. To build on the successes of the Ice House, in 2013, the City of Asheville, in part, with help from our federal partners through the East of the Riverway Strategic Communities, I'm sorry, East of the Riverway Sustainable Communities Grant, the City of Asheville has begun the Riverside Drive Strategic Plan to identify highest and best reuse of city-owned property, along with recommendations of how to partner with private sector to achieve as many of the City of Asheville's goals as possible and provide a redevelopment plan that will bring a return on the taxpayer dollars. We expect this process to commence soon, and it will be a 24-week process from what I understand from the consultants. Um, the consultants will be taking a tour of the study area with the Riverfront Redevelopment Commission on, April, on Saturday, April 20th, and they ask that you put May 31st as uh, on your calendar. There will be a big public event looking for you know, in community input at that point. Another piece that has been very much a part of our workflow in 2012 and continues to be part of our workflow in 2013 is the River Arts District Transportation Improvement Project. We have moved on to phase two, and that phase two will focus on the spot safety needs, out needs outlined by council as part of the conditional use approval for New Belgium Brewery. I will say that last night, New Belgium Brewery's general manager, Jay Richardson, reiterated that the alternative that all, what he, I'm not sure exactly how he said it, but the way I heard it was alternate truck configurations, i.e. the trucks being smaller or shorter, actually proved to have, they had many more um, options than they originally thought, and that should help make the Norfolk Southern train bridge height issue a non-issue. But the turning radius intersect, at the intersection of Craven and Riverside is still a concern. Having a, ultimately, having a shovel-ready rad tip project, hence available for federal funding, is the goal. With the uncertainty around our current budget considerations, the AARC will work as one outreach arm to bring partners together to see how we can pay for this. Another job that the AARC takes very seriously as, is as an informational source. 
in, at our January meeting, Commissioner George Morsani mentioned the Biggert's Water, Waters Act and its effect on flood insurance rates going, potentially going up significantly. Mayor Vihan got us in contact with John Gerber, who is the North Carolina coordinator for the National Flood Insurance Program, and he will be doing a presentation at our meeting this coming Thursday at 4 o'clock at the Chamber. Um, he will also be telling us about the new flood risk information system being impl implemented in North Carolina, and thanks to Mayor Vihan, Buncombe County will be, will be one of the first ones to get included into that. Okay. We do a lot of other stuff in that we do a lot of behind the scenes. We have what we call our internal networking, talking, you know, just private, having coffee with property owners, having property, having coffee with anybody that might be able to partner with us. We also do our local, our sort of our, our outreach. Um, sorry, I'm not going to read all this stuff, but the main thing to know about the website, we've talked about having an AARC website before, and what we find is that we think we will be best served if we use the City of Asheville website for the official information about the AARC. I have set up avlriverfront.com as my commission chair's blog. It's really a community information-based place. And then we are also this year working with the Economic Development Coalition to make a developer-focused portal that will have a riverfront focus. Um, we're talking about seeing if their databases can be, can be searched by riverfront properties and make that process a lot easier. So we're working on that to go forward. We're also working with City of Asheville Economic Development on gap analysis about what the pieces between what the city does, what the county does, and make sure that everything is covered. I won't get down, this is a new project at 233 Riverside. We're also seeing this Thursday. This is just a list of a bunch of things that are happening on the riverfront. Again, there's more information about all of this on the website if you choose to go. Um, 11 Thompson Street, we hope to be new apartments on our riverfront, and again, living on the riverfront is really important to us. As always, please join us. Our meeting is the second, Saturday, second Thursday of every month at 4 p.m. at the second floor boardroom of the chamber. That's my personal information, and my, my informa that email works really well for city staff. We all share that email. And then Stephanie Monson is our terrific whoop, um, staff liaison, and so this is her contact information if you, for any reason, have an economic development project you want to talk to her about. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ms. Torno. Council, any questions or comments? Coming. Councilman Davis and Councilman Smith. First of all, I would have bet the farm you could not have said that all in that length of time. <laughs> I Patty, worked on uh, it. Patty is the river's, or one of the river's largest cheerleaders. She is a, she's kind of the, uh, the artist who has stepped out and, and made a huge difference for a lot of people. And, and I'm very pleased that uh, we've had great leadership as this, this Riverfront Redevelopment Commission has unfolded. And Ricky Silver had it to begin with. And I thought, well, who will we find to replace Ricky with? But Patty is just uh, unbelievable. She, she's always working on river, river issues. And uh, I appreciate it so much. And, and you, uh, you look great this evening. I don't Thank think you. I've ever seen you look so nice. It's great. Um, I put on so, lipstick for y'all. So this is, uh, <laughs> this, this is uh, a, a great occasion to have Patty come do this. And it, uh, the mayor was, uh, this, this was an idea that the mayor came up with originally. It was one of those thoughts that she had several years ago that uh, we could work together and put together a group of people that would have uh, stake in the river and would uh, would come along. So all these members are, are from different organizations, and uh, it's, it's great to have everybody at the same table doing working on the same goals. And it's uh, it is a gr good group of people. So thank you so much. Thank you, Jan. That's very kind. Thank you, Jan. Councilman Smith. No. I'm sorry. Uh, you're next. I think you're next. Councilman Bothwell. Okay, uh, Patty. You mentioned an, an event on was it May 31st? May 31st. It is, I don't have solid details. What I'm hearing is it will be to talk about a bunch of partnerships that are going on in, in 
in and around city-owned property in the River Arts District. So it will be, the Asheville Design Center will be talking about that pedestrian bridge that I alluded to. It will be an opportunity to get feedback. It, I believe it will also include open, Luli Gonzalez doing some work with Mission Hospital around some placemaking devices in the River Arts District. Um, it's an opportunity to share with the neighborhood some things that are going on and also get feedback from the neighborhood about what kind of activation of that site our, our community is interested in seeing. And is that a daytime or an evening event? My understanding is that it's Friday evening, okay. and I believe that it will be down, it'll be based around the 14 Riverside um, location, around that PSNC building that, because part of the Riverside Drive strategic plan is to figure out highest and best use, reuse for that property. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Now, Councilman Smith. Patty, thanks for everything you do. I don't know if folks watch and understand that this is all volunteer and that you're putting in hour after hour, doing all these community meetings, doing all this planning, reaching out to all these people, trying to continue to turn our riverfront into, into the, just one of the centerpieces of the city. Um, and I've got kind of a broad question for you, yeah, and please. that's you know, knowing that the riverfront is... The city council has said, yes, absolutely, we've got yes. to keep moving forward on this. And y'all are working so hard, and our partners are working so hard. I guess I wonder, what do you need? What, do you, what, what more do you need from us? Can I come back to you in a little bit? And, and Whenever Jan, you're ready to ask. Dan, that, please chime in. <laughs> it, it's interesting because there has been some conversation about how we are configured. You know, when we were looking at, do we do a website? The big question was, where do we get funding for a website? And how do we activate all of our partners to, to as Peter Sprague referred to, to lean in? Mm. So I would say any kind of capacity building for collaboration within, between the Economic Development Coalition, the county, um, and all of our partners, that would be a, a true asset. But I'll, I'll come back to you with a list. How about Thank that? You. Thank you. I appreciate that ask. All right. Any other comments from Council? Thank you again for your Thank you service. very much. I appreciate Thank it. You. And Council, before we call up Mr. Richardson, I want to take an opportunity for Chief Barnett to just give us a quick overview of what's happening with the fires that have been happening on the river, how they responded, because we, we know you all have been working hard on those issues. So can you speak to what's going on? Yeah, yes, ma'am. I'll be, be happy to. Um, from the time period of April 1st until April the 6th, uh, we re responded to four intentionally set fires here in Asheville. That's an unusually high number, as council knows, uh, for Asheville, and so that certainly uh, gives us some alarm when we have four intentionally set fires in a short time period. Uh, of those four fires, uh, two occurred in the same night. Uh, the, the good news is, is uh, since Saturday, April the 6th, we, we have not had any more fires, and, and we do have uh, resources that are um, investigating all of these uh, incidents. And uh, we uh, certainly urge the community that if, if anyone has any information that can assist, uh, the uh, uh, Crime Stoppers, uh, calling uh, APD at uh, uh, the 252 um, and then also the, the text to tip uh, number is uh, C-R-I-M-E-S, CRIMES. Uh, if, if someone wants to use that new, new tool, it certainly is, is beneficial to get information from the community. Okay. Thank you so very much. Yes, ma'am. So the biggest thing is information now, trying yes, to get the information. Thank you. All right. Mr. Richardson, we're going to move forward on the print, with the printed agenda to the legislative and water updates for Mr. Richardson. Yes, ma'am. Madam Mayor and members of council, Thank you so much for the opportunity to be here this evening. I will briefly go over uh, relevant legislation bills that are in Raleigh and in play currently. I would like to recognize Mr. Jackson who just uh, stepped in uh, during the river presentation. I know Mr. Jackson has been in Raleigh all day today. Uh, or most of the day and spent the afternoon coming back and the first bill that I will highlight for the council is actually uh, the, one of the main reasons that Mr. Jackson was in Raleigh. He was there this morning to address the finance committee and, and certainly Mr. Jackson uh, I'll highlight briefly what happened and then if you have anything to add 
certainly would love for you to uh, provide any information that you have. Uh, this is House Bill 488, Mayor Bellamy, uh, the regionalization of our public utilities. Uh, this morning, as I just mentioned, the Finance Committee, uh, House Finance Committee did hear uh, from City Manager Jackson and did uh, vote to move this forward. Uh, House Bill 488 will now move to the House floor and um, House, House committee members today indicated that they may introduce amendments to the legislation. We do have the, the, the substitute bill uh, that was introduced this morning. Uh, city Attorney Bob Ost has taken a quick look at that and, and as I indicated Mr. Jackson was in Raleigh. Uh, anything that you would want to add to that sir? At the end of your at the end of your presentation, I might add a few things. Yes, sir. And in addition to that, I know that City Attorney Ost has also drafted a resolution for Council's consideration this evening on House Bill 488, uh, opposing uh, that bill to move forward. There are several other that I will talk about that have more of a direct impact or an immediate impact on the Asheville budget. I know that last week uh, the Asheville City Council did host a town hall meeting uh, mid last week, and you talked with our community uh, about several of these bills and what the, uh, the potential impact could be on our budget. I will mention House Bill 252, which is somewhat tied to House Bill 488. And this specifically addresses the uh, repeal of the Sullivan Act Amendment that currently allows the city of Asheville to transfer 5% of its utility revenue uh, for infrastructure improvements that are associated with water line improvements. House Bill 252 has passed the House. 5% uh, equates to, uh, I believe, about $1.8 million annually. Uh, and this bill would, would discontinue Asheville's ability uh, to utilize utility revenue for this purpose. House Bill 224, previously uh, this has been discussed uh, in this venue with council, but this is the, uh, 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 the bill that would propose uh, uh, or require the city of Asheville to relinquish uh, our extra territorial jurisdiction in Buncombe County. It also would prevent Asheville from initiating any non-voluntary annexation proceedings. This has been approved in the House and has been uh, referred to the Senate Committee on State and Local Government. Uh, Senate Bill 363, this is the Business Tax, tax Reduction and Reform Bill. Uh, this, has, this is a statewide bill. This has received a lot of attention in Raleigh. We're, we're continuing to monitor it closely. The effective date I would flag for the council, as you are aware, is January the 1st, 2015, if it's passed as proposed. And it has a fiscal impact with the loss of that a business privilege license of somewhere of between 1.4 and 1.7 million dollars annually to our general fund. Senate Bill 394 is the 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 tax reform bill that the General Assembly has been working on. Uh, I know the Asheville City Council has been monitoring this closely and you have spoke to our local delegation, I'm sure. Uh, we do know that Representative Moffitt restated last week that the intent of the bill is to ensure that cities across North Carolina remain revenue neutral. We continue to monitor this. I know that cities and counties across the state are monitoring this closely simply because uh, there are no details at this time as to how this would affect mm -hmm. cities and counties across the state on a city and county by county basis. And Mr. Richardson, we're talking about your number. Is that thousand million or hundred? Oh, I'm sorry. That's, uh, uh, that would eliminate across the state $320 million in existing municipal revenue uh, if this were to go statewide in, in terms of, of how they're tax restructuring, and I apologize, that's, that's, a, that's a, um, a mistake in that, in that data. It would, have a, it would have a significant effect with the tax restructuring, and we have not been able to get uh, sufficient detail at this time as to how uh, the General Assembly would propose that, that the restructuring go to where on a city and county by county basis that, that, that there would be revenue neutrality. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. And uh, in addition to that, and this has received some attention in the media, House Bill 418, which is uh, a bill that would propose uh, the, the creation, uh, 
uh, through Buncombe County government, uh, establishing a joint city county parks and recreation authority. Uh, the staff is continuing to, to monitor this, to look at it, and, and is prepared to work uh, to, to look at what this might look, at, look like uh, under this uh, proposed bill. And, and how this would affect the Asheville City taxpayer and how the cooperation and the collaboration would need to move forward with Buncombe County. Senate Bill 612, uh, Regulatory Reform Act of 2013. Uh, this was filed earlier this week, actually yesterday, and we're in the early stages of trying to determine what this specifically means for Asheville. But basically, again, it, 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 it is designed uh, for um, cities uh, in, in the area of, of development review, stormwater review, uh, permitting and such to, to be consistent and not more, uh, 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 not to have more, more closely evaluated permitting restrictions than does state government. And so we're in the process of looking in specific areas as to how this would affect the, the Asheville city government. <clears throat> I'll go back and, and, and certainly answer any questions that council has, but if there are no questions, I certainly would, would turn that back over to Mr. Jackson to talk further about House Bill 4088 as well as the proposed resolution. All right. Mr. Jackson. Yes, thank you. Um, appreciate Mr. Richardson giving us the report and keeping council and the community abreast of several important bills that are moving through the General Assembly at this time. My report from attending this morning's Senate Finan House Finance Committee is as follows. Uh, the committee heard what's called House Bill 488 revised, which is uh, a regionalization of water and sewer utilities. It, as presented, as you may know, calls for all systems, all all combined sewer and water systems serving under 100, serving over 125 thousand people must be uh, conformed with this new general statewide public bill. It calls for a 15 member board to be appointed and then goes into specifications about how that applies to serving multiple counties, how many would be uh, appointed by uh, the largest city in that area, uh, each of those areas, and then provides for other um, municipal appointments to the 15-member board. The uh, comments that I made uh, this morning were to emphasize that uh, this mayor and council have uh, put business and uh, our citizens first in managing the water system, managed the water system uh, since 2005 like a business, have put $70 million into that system to upgrade the infrastructure, the plants, the lines, and are pr providing uh, high quality uh, water supply. Um, we are serving our businesses well, we're serving our citizens well with reliable quality supply. We have uh, made consistent and significant efficiency improvements in our system. And so when you combine uh, House Bill 488, the regionalization, with the other bill that Mr. Richardson mentioned, House Bill 252, the proposal would not create productivity and efficiency savings for our ratepayers. So I emphasize that point, that at this point we are running uh, a top rate system that's meeting our customers' needs, that's very cost effective and efficient, and there would not be by the own calculations of the consultant, independent consultant that was engaged by the sewer district would not produce um, savings. So this was a low return, a very high risk proposition. And that we were on track with, uh, identified by in 2010 by Forbes as one of the top 10 locations for conducting business in the country, that we had in 2012, the highest grade of municipal job growth and creation among all metropolitan areas in the state, and that at this point, our tourism and hospitality industry, which is so important, has now recovered fully to above 2008 recession levels of occupancy. So that we're on the right trajectory. Uh, we certainly feel that 
we're managing the water system the best way possible, and, and most recently as evidenced by uh, national breweries, the Sierra Nevada and New Belgium deciding to come here, spend hundreds of millions of dollars and create hundreds of jobs when they could choose any other water system to draw from for their product anywhere on the East Coast. So we feel like we're on the right trajectory and so therefore I communicated the uh, consensus of this council that you were opposed to the re regionalization and that is taking uh, requiring both the sewer district, the Metropolitan Sewer District, and the City of Asheville to move assets and permits to a newly created regional entity. So this would be a new regional entity that would replace the two existing regional entities that already are in place. At that, the only thing I would add to that, um, which the outcome is pretty certain, the vote went along partisan lines, I will say that uh, Representative Moffitt was gracious and allowed me up to six minutes to present my comments. Um, as you know, he's still, he and uh, Representative uh, Ramsey and Representative uh, McGrady from Hendersonville are the, the authors of this bill. Um, so none, notwithstanding that they're advocating the bills, they were gracious in allowing my comments to be heard. Those comments were favorably received by the committee members. Um, there were probably several notable comments I would mention that um, a representative from Wilmington made it clear that the merger there of water and sewer in, <clears throat> into the Cape Fear system, Wilmington Hanover, has uh, been a disaster in her estimation and that they should look at that if um, they need any further evidence that these mergers are uh, no walk in the park and no guarantee for success and in fact can have very disastrous results. The uh, other uh, key comments were comments from both um, uh, Deborah Ross and uh, Representative Paul Stamm who questioned whether or not this as written, a general bill, should not be more appropriately applied as a local bill and supported by the local, fully supported by the local definition delegation. The uh, outcome of the vote was, I believe, 18 to 10 in favor of the bill, largely along partisan lines, as I indicated before, so it goes to the House tomorrow. The questions that I, and the comments that I highlighted uh, were also cause for the committee to task the bill drafter, bill drafting staff, to revisit the way the bill is written to be a general bill and to prepare potential amendments and revisions on the floor to make it clear that it does not extend and apply and be a thou shall and thou must to more systems than Asheville. So there's a very clear concern by both Republicans and Democrats that the way this bill is written it potentially applies in far more cases than just in Asheville. Any questions or comments from Council? Councilman Bothwell. Um, I had a question for Mr. Richardson uh, about the, the bill that was just introduced. And, and I guess it's more of the, not so much a question as to clarify for people listening at home. The state, that, that bill would attempt to reduce the ability of municipal governments to protect water and um, to impose conservation rules, right? They're trying to take away our ability to do more than the state rules. Yes, sir. I, I think in general, you're, you're, that's my understanding. Senate Bill 612, I believe, is what you're referring to. And uh, again, the staff has not been able, with the, the, the filing of this being yesterday, staff's not been able to do a full analysis. But my, my, my early indication is that it's a bill that's intending cities who may have uh, higher levels of control uh, more check-ins, more requirements in the areas of stormwater, in the areas of grading, in the areas of, of uh, stormwater retention, and other related developmental controls that they that they align with minimum state requirements. We're going to continue to monitor that and uh, and 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 see exactly what that means. And and it's a tone and and consistency that we've seen with other related bills uh, in the area of uh, permitting and and development review. Thank you. 
Mm -hmm. We also have to look at the federal legislation because the reason we have a stormwater utility today is because it was an unfunded mandate that was passed on by the federal government stating that we had to put a committee together to look at these issues to create this utility and to look at some of the requirements. So I think we need to make sure we're adhering to this, the federal requirements and maybe outline some of the concerns that may exist if we um, differ from what the federal government has already put out for us to comply with. Absolutely, and, and the only thing that I would add from a staff perspective, certainly not the person in our organization that knows by any stretch the most about this, is that all local jurisdictions are not created equal, meaning that for a city like Asheville with to to topography, uh, uh, challenges, grade challenges and such, that development here is, is more tricky and, and more challenging in, in, in many respects than it is in lo other local jurisdictions uh, that may be, may be uh, uh, more flat and, and, and have not, may not have water runoff, sedimentation issues that like we've experienced here in the city. So, so that, that can oftentimes speak to local issues that need more uh, 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 local control and, and local authority to address uh, uh, citizen concern. And so again, we'll continue to look at this across all of our related development policies and, and certainly be prepared maybe in two weeks to come back and talk more thoroughly about this. I would say also, and, I'm, and I failed to mention this, that we, we are tracking, while I only mentioned about five bills this afternoon, we have about 16 total bills that are on a matrix that is at our actual website that we continue to monitor that could have some effect in some way on the city of Asheville. Many of those bills are statewide uh, as opposed to local bills, but we'll continue to monitor that matrix and try to provide those updates for citizens. Uh, and we're also getting a lot of assistance through our League of Municipalities, who's also tracking uh, on a daily basis how these bills are moving through through the House and Senate. Okay. Thank you very much. Councilman I have one more follow-up about this particular piece of legislation. I, I, in, I've heard a couple of opinions already about it. Um, with some concern that the bill won't apply only to these minimum design criteria, but could be interpreted to mean that we can't have a lot of different types of city standards that would exceed those set by the state. And I'm, I'm hoping to hear more from legal about that as, as you all do an interpretation to see how broadly it could be applied. Yes, sir. With, with that, I'll turn it over to Mr. Rose. I, I, I've not had any more time to look at the bill that Mr. Richardson has, but that was uh, uh, that was the sense that I got from it was that it was it was just in, in the in the brief review that I did have of it is that it was uh, one of the uh, intents of it was to, to uh, uh, was to conform local regulation with state regulation, which in many cases would be a a, a, a less stringent form of regulation. So you're saying that this is like I mean you have to do some more research and look into it a little more deeply, but that this may apply more broadly than just beyond stormwater regs? Um, th th there may be other bills that, uh, th that accomplish the same thing with respect to other types of regulation. Thank you. All right, and Bob, as you're preparing to speak, you know, Council, I, I do think it just needs to be said again that I don't support um, the bills in its new state that has been offered up for consideration tomorrow for our House, uh, the North Carolina legislators on the House side. Um, I think the concerns that were expressed by other members of the committee today um, from Wake County, from um, representing, representing um, their water system and saying that they're concerned about some of the statewide impacts, that they don't want this in, in Wake County. So I think what has been changed and presented even today mm -hmm. is not a best management practice nor is it a good bill. And, that's, and those are the words were actually stated today that one of the legislators said this is not a good bill. They, they actually said this is a bad bill. So Bob, I think you have some resolutions for us. I, I have one resolution. <laughs> it's coming. And it's, it's before you, but I wanted to. <laughs> While they're doing that, if I may just add, um, Presuming the bill moves through the House, that's the regionalization of water and sewer utilities in areas of greater than 125,000 population, it will go to the Senate next. You refer probably the local government or finance in the Senate. And uh, for that reason, I just want to mention um, Senator Martin Nesbitt, uh, who represents us, uh, Buncombe County, was very helpful, took 
um, 30 minutes to get caught up to speed on what happened in the committee this morning and another 30 minutes uh, with his aide and me uh, to work, consider the, the possible alternative um, ways that he might address that when he gets in the Senate. So he, he's on top of it and very concerned about Buncombe County losing its assets uh, and that the number of, of seats that would be granted under this new board structure to Henderson County would be way out of proportion with the 6% of the sewer bet uh, flow and 2% of the water customer base uh, to gain two full seats or more on this uh, seemed to be above and beyond. He's also concerned, uh, and you'll be hearing more about this, that the bill does allow for privatization of administration of a water system. It does not allow for the transfer or sale of the water system, but it does allow for privatization of the administration of the water system. What does that look like in, in practice, Gary? Lease and contract. Lease and contract management of operations, capital construction, analysis of rate making. All the things that you, you now see and brought very transparently to this city council by the city staff. Thank you. Um, the mayor and council at the, at the suggestion of, uh, of, of, of our legislative consultants in Raleigh and along with some representatives, we um, uh, I, I put together a resolution that, uh, uh, that expresses opposition to House Bill 488 along the same lines of the resolution the council has previously adopted. Those, those previous resolutions, which were adopted in December, uh, uh, and actually early in, in 2012 and then late in 2012, were, were, were adopted kind of in a vacuum because we didn't know what the bill would look like when, uh, when, when it was finally introduced. On March 28th, which was after your last meeting, uh, the, the bill was introduced. We've had a chance to go through it. Uh, I've, I've had very little time with the, with the committee substitute that Mr. Jackson referred to today, but I don't think that any of the, any of the fundamental provisions have changed. And, and what, this, uh, what this resolution does is, uh, is, it, is it speaks to some of the, uh, some of the specific, uh, uh, a little bit to the specific provisions of House Bill 488 and also folds in the previous, uh, the previous resolutions, mentions that, that over 50 cities have adopted resolution opposing the forced transfer of water systems. Um, it, it, one of the things that, that is addressed to House Bill 488 is, uh, is down in, uh, is, is in, is in this, this provision here where it, it's, and, and this was something that some people have noted with some concern, is that an authority established pursuant to the new law that would be adopted uh, would have the power to condemn property, borrow money, adopt ordinances, set water and sewer rates, and impose taxes, but it's not an elected board. And I, I know that's a concern this council has expressed. Um, and repeating some of the uh, some of the uh, sentiments that were expressed in earlier resolutions, it it is we think, and this is, gets confirmed every day, it would be an unprecedented intrusion by the state into matters that have long been matters of local concern, which is a point we've tried to emphasize over and over. Uh, and so um, the 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 be it resolved part of the resolution says that council opposes House Bill 488 for the reasons set forth above. And for the reasons expressed in, uh, in, in, in your previous resolutions that, that, that will be attached to this resolution, and that we request that, 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 the, that the members of the North Carolina General Assembly vote against House Bill 488. Um, and, uh, Mr. Jackson, what is, is, the, is this scheduled to go to the floor of the House tomorrow or Thursday? Yes, sir. Is tomorrow. It? Okay. Then, then I will make sure that the, uh, the mayor signs this tonight, and, and I'll transmit it by email to, uh, to some folks down in Raleigh to make sure it gets distributed to the right places. All right, Council, is there a motion to approve the resolution? So moved. Is there a second? Second. The motion has been made and properly seconded. Any further questions or comments? Because this is an addition to the agenda, any member of the community wishing to address Council on the proposed resolution? Okay. Council, all in favor of the resolution, please say aye. 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 All opposed, like sign. The motion carries. Thank you all so very much. And Bob, if you get that to me, I get it signed so we can get it to our legislators. Um, Gary, we did set the next budget work session for April the 18th. When do you want council's comments regarding staff's proposed cuts? Like I'm not supportive of the Nature Center and some of the other things that were on the list. So are we gonna talk about any of that before we go on the 18th or would you like that for the 23rd? I understand that you were setting a public hearing, an, another town hall meeting. Uh, what we uh, heard from you at the last uh, town hall meeting is that you'd like to replicate the staff presentation. 
if um, there are any aspects of that presentation that do not meet with the satisfaction of four members of council, we'll be happy to, to edit and make those revisions as accordingly. Okay. All right. All right. Thank you very much. Oh, yeah, I, I'm interested in getting to that point as well. And with so many moving parts of the legislature right now, uh, I, what I find myself curious is about is how far down the road are we going to have to kick some of those decisions until things become more concrete as far as the budget numbers go? And it seems very unclear at this point. Yes, and ple please understand that what the staff uh, presentation did was outline various different alternative decision-making packages and alternatives for council. It certainly didn't recommend one or the other uh, as a certainty, but simply to say if you were looking at a, something in the magnitude of five to six million dollars, and we were looking across the board at cuts, this is what we'd, we would put on the table and ask for your direction for. Okay. So don't consider that as a budget proposal or even an outline for what the budget would be. Uh, we, as you indicate, Council Member Gordon would uh, work with you if, if the impact of the, the state bills would be reduced from six million to a lower number, we would, we would adjust accordingly. Um, we have some priorities as well from the things that are on the list, and you will continue to hear from citizens. But, but that's the point of it, is to hear from citizens, weigh your options, and then when we have that, that work session, uh, the next work session, that's where we'll be looking for a specific direction so we can finalize the, the recommended budget. So that will be April 23rd for those who are at home. Um, public hearing on the 18th, work session on the 23rd. Correct. Any other comments? All right. Thank you, Council. We only have a couple more things on our printed agenda because a lot of things have been delayed. Um, the next item and the only public hearing we have this evening is a continuation of consideration of an amendment to the conditional zoning for Weir Bridge Village signage package located on Hendersonville Road, Legacy Oaks Place, and Racket Club Road. And the vice mayor closed the public hearing on this issue, if I'm not... Did you? No, no, no. I said, did you close, you close the public hearing on this issue two weeks ago? All right, so we've closed the public hearing. Um, we wanted a full contingency to d address this issue. I don't know if staff wanted anything to bring before council. No. Okay. Council, questions, comments on this issue or a motion? Councilman Bothwell. Yeah, I, I've... Uh long believe that we need to enforce our sign ordinances and that they need to be enforced uh, equally uh, on all businesses and that it, it's bad policy to keep making variances and if I think if the if, if in the future it's better to have the ability to put two signs two sandwich boards up for for a drive-through that's something council should consider separately. Uh, it seems to me that parties to this McDonald's that's going to be built entered into it under the given rules. And I, I really can't vote for uh, give, uh, allowing a variance. I don't see that it's reasonable. That's where I stand on it. Councilman Hunt. Um, Julie or someone from staff, could you describe where we are with um, the trend in fast food restaurants to have two signs instead of one, the history of uh, allowances we've made, you know, on a case-by-case -case basis, and where our policy is headed on what time frame on this? Um, when the sign ordinance was adopted, whatever, 15, 20 years ago, um, the prototype for uh, drive through restaurants was a single menu board, a single order station. In very recent years, I, th I think we've probably only seen it in the last two or three years, that prototype has changed. And what we are seeing is people modernize or update um, their drive through restaurants or new drive through restaurants are, are built. They're looking at the two different ordering stations where they converge um, to where you pay and pick up your food. So this is the, sort of the way of the future, and it just wasn't anticipated, and it wasn't what was happening when the sign ordinance was adopted. 
Um, there is an interest, and um, we just staff has just not gotten around to it in, in amending this, recognizing that this is the prototype, and very often you don't even see the menu boards from the road. Um, in the interim, it's my understanding, uh, and I have not taken these matters to the Board of Adjustment, but it's my understanding that at least two situations where there was either a renovation, uh, an update, or a, a new drive-through facility um, constructed that the board has granted um, the ability to, to use two menu boards on a parcel um, with the same size, the 36 square feet allowed for a particular menu board, but, but allowing two, recognizing that this is the future and that there is an interest in amending that policy that staff has, um, is recognizing that and would bring that forward to, to council. We haven't done that at this time, but should you choose to approve this, it wouldn't be out of, um, it wouldn't be different from what the Board of Adjustment has done in those recent cases. Thank you. Mayor, what I would offer is uh, the decision about whether or not there should be a drive through restaurant on this site was essentially made in 2006 when the uh, the highway business conditional zoning uh, designation for this property was made. I understand that many of the residents are concerned about a drive through restaurant going on this site and would seek to have this uh, this as a leverage point to keep that from happening. Uh, again, it's, it's my view that, that the decision about what the use of the site would be was determined in 2006. Um, I, I just am unwilling to use what really amounts to a sort of a, a non-synchronization of our, our uh, ordinance with the reality of how every fast food business is being built uh, is a, a means to deter that. I think the developer did get uh, essentially uh, a, a zoning classification that, that made economic sense to him. Now, I'm not a fan of sprawl development. I'm not a fan of fast food drive-throughs. I don't wish to see a proliferation of high traffic or this kind of development across the city. I, I don't want anybody to get me wrong about that, but I do think that in terms of equity and fairness and history that, uh, th that this uh, should move forward with the granting of the, the second menu board sign. I think it's a 30 square foot sign, so I, I plan to support it. Thank you. All right. Is it a motion or you just uh, It's a motion. Okay. There is a motion. Second. And there's a second. All right. We have a motion and a second. Questions? Uh, yes. Process question, Mayor. Yes. Uh, we have several members of the public here regarding this issue as well uh, uh, Crow, uh, Crowfield's residents as well as the developer we have this advertised on our agenda here as a public hearing and uh, I, 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 uh, and, and given the fact that our agenda is relatively light tonight I think uh, we should be willing to listen to the members of the public that wish to speak to it will be up to council um, only because of vice mayor closed the public hearing for public comment last session and so it will be the will of council to open it back up for public comment. Um, usually, just so you know, protocol is only opened up to new information. Whenever we continue an issue, we open it up for public comment when new information is provided. Maybe new speakers. New speakers. So, Pardon? new speakers? New speakers, yes. And are you saying new speakers and new information? Right, because that sounds like looking through the minutes, I had an opportunity to look at the minutes, it seems like a lot of ground was covered as it relates to the issue of access um, getting in and out of quote fields was the majority of comments and so you want to speak to that or more comments? well I know uh, one of the past presidents of uh, crow fields is here and prepared to kind of give a little bit of context to the question before us today okay mr. Cox mr. Cox please come forward and state your name officially for the record <clears throat> Good evening, Good evening, Mayor, Welcome. Council. My name is Mac Cox. I'm a former president of Crowfields Condominium Association, 2005-2006, and a former city employee, the city of Asheville, as a police officer. And this gentleman here, I worked with his father. So I've been around a while, so I am certainly qualified to live at Crowfields, which is a 55-plus community. Uh, first of all, I would like to say one thing regarding this whole affair. The association, excuse me, the city council approved 
this development in 2006, I think it was. And our biggest complaint at that time, of course, you're going to have certain individuals that express their certain things that they don't like or like. But the thing was at that time was the density. That was the big factor. It was nothing other than that. Because I said at that meeting years ago that we are not against development. The, the city of Asheville is, is growing. People are moving here weekly, daily. And so we understand that. The only problem we have there is the traffic issue at this time. That is the big point. Uh, I would like to say, if I could, a little history for some of the new council members who were not on council at that point in time and give you a little background if you don't mind. Uh, <clears throat> first of all, when Mr. Pulliam, our, our developer, I would like first of all give him a compliment, a compliment that he said that he was going to build a beautiful complex, which he has. And it is very beautiful, very lovely, a lot of amenities. <clears throat> but to give you the history of how this all came about, uh, Mr. Pulliam came to us in 2005, I think it was. I was the chair at that point of the association. And I enlisted the help of three former past presidents of Crowfields County Men's Association to meet with Mr. Pulliam several times and discuss what his plans were. Uh, first of all, his first request of Crowfields was if you will allow me to have a laker approximately of your frontage property facing Hendersonville Road for a bank to be built, I will give you an access to my development. That was overwhelmingly denied by Crowfields. And I think you can understand that with the value of that property. Nevertheless, he has gone ahead and he has continued to offer that access. And that <coughs> being said, uh, once we have a lot of different opinions within Crowfields, of course, like any association, especially seniors, and uh, we're old and cranky at times. But anyway, uh, once that fence it border is broken, <clears throat> it allows. If, if council is okay, it would be great to just hear what happened in the past. Yes, I would like. I appreciate that very much because I I need a couple more minutes at least. Anyway, so we at that time had decided not to do it. And the reason for it is simply <clears throat> liability. Bear in mind, we have two lakes, several streams, and the development that Mr. Pulliam has developed has no age limit on children or people. <clears throat> we do on terms of how often visits can occur. And we're very cognizant that we do not want anybody uh, to get hurt in our development. Moreover, we like what the development has been since it was established in the late 1970s. And uh, it has had a lot of uh, beautiful improvements made. And we're very pleased and happy with what we have there. But uh, anyway, I'm just asking this council to give Crowfields a little consideration. And I know there's been some aggravation in times past. That happens, and I'm sorry. But anyway, we would like to continue our lifestyle there, and we would like to do that all the time. But moreover, it's not my decision. I'm a former president and a resident. This, we have a good democracy system in our neighborhood, and I will let the democracy decide what wishes we would like to pursue. Specifically, there's several people there that like the access, and there's people who do not. That will be voted on in our community to decide which way we as a community would like to go. But we still have the traffic problems, which we're all aware of, and we will go with this in a civil manner to resolve this at end, end issue. I think that's all I have to say, except in closing. Uh, there will be a meeting soon with city count, with city staff regarding traffic problems and that I do thank you in advance for allowing that to occur. Yep. Thank, thank you. you very much. Others? Uh, I wasn't here so I'm not sure who spoke and who was who did not. Thank, thank you, you Mr. Cox. Uh, I don't know if there's others that want to speak for that. Others with new information who did not speak last time. 
Okay. Thank you all. Council, we will bring it back in. Other questions or comments? We do have a motion um, on the floor. Any other comments? I, I would like to say something. I, I wasn't here in person, so I had to go through the minutes to see what the issues were. And it looked like they sent it around access for crow fields to safely leave their facilities. And it sounds like you all are going to work on um, voting as a body, the residents of Crowfield, to take the offer that was given by uh, Mr. Pulliam to have access to a traffic signal, which was part of the condition use permit offerings from 2006. Ms. Ms. Fields, I believe that was correct, that even then that was part of the conversation? All right, so it was offered then, and so um, I didn't see a lot of objection to the traffic directly related to the second board. And I didn't see a lot of that in the comments. I just didn't read. I read more of the comments about Crowfield's traffic, not because of the board. And council, um, looking at the Board of Adjustments minutes, um, it does look like there have been at least three boards approved because of the changes that have not been made in our sign ordinance. And this is a little bunny trail, but I did ask that we need to upgrade our sign ordinance because it is dated. And so it isn't up to date with a lot of the trends that's happening across the community and country, and so that's why we've had people come before us. And had this not been a conditional use permit process, the sign would have just gone to the Board of Adjustments and not the City Council. But because this was a conditional use zoning, that's why it came to City Council. And seeing that I read the minutes and I didn't see an overwhelming, we don't want the board, it was more we don't, we're careful about our access, which in my mind the board will help get people through the property quicker as opposed to having them build up because it's one sign. I'm supportive of the motion. And so we definitely need to improve our sign ordinance to bring it into our current realities because if not, we're going to continue to have these issues that are problematic that could be easily addressed if we changed our ordinances. As we've heard, it's been about 15 years since we've done that, and a lot has changed in 15 years. So it's time for us to really look at our sign ordinance. Councilman Pelly, and then Councilman Bockwell. Uh, Mayor, um, Crowfields first opened in 1972, so they've been open over 40 years, and I've talked to some longtime residents there, and they've seen the, the scale and volume of traffic uh, along Henderson Road, uh, Hendersonville Road increase and increase again and again, and yes, this issue, the immediate issue that we're voting on today is about the uh, sign package, but I think the residents of Crowfields believe that that the, the cumulative effect of the development surrounding their neighborhood is impacting the quality of life there, uh, and that this is, this, is, this is one way to make that point known when, when issues come before council here. Um, what I would say to the residents of Crowfields is that we need to find a long-term solution to this here. And, and I'm pleased that city traffic transportation staff are going to be meeting out on site a week from now. And I'm pleased that there'll be a reconsideration of the offer for the easement because I think that's the way that we're going to be able to ultimately provide safe egress for the residents that need to leave crow fields who are concerned about turning left on the Hendersonville Road and the increased traffic volume there. So I'm hopeful that you'll give due consideration to this, uh, but I recognize that in the eyes of many, this is, it, crow fields has not been treated fairly over the years, so. Um, but I just want to acknowledge that and I'm hopeful that we can ultimately come to a solution that is in the long-term interest of the residents there. Um. Councilman Pelly, um, while the person on the phone leaves, um, I will just disagree a little bit. Um, one of the issues that Crowfield also have, has expressed over the years was stormwater, and we spent quite a bit of money mitigating a big stormwater runoff. Um, the traffic issue we thought could have been addressed in 2006 with the access road to the new red light that was put in as a result of real, real bridge because those are two concerns that I've consistently heard over the years. Stormwater, not so much. So to make a broad brush statement saying that they hadn't been treated fairly isn't, isn't 
as accurate as it should be. I think that we've responded to the overwhelming issues that we've heard um, that are in our realm, but this is now in their realm of how to respond. It's offered that the developers actually paid for this additional traffic signal and now the developer wants to improve their entrance to make it safer for them. And so we can't be held hostage or blamed because they didn't want it up until now. And so um, it's an opportunity. I think that having a light will make it safer. Um, yeah, Councilman Bothwell. Um, as I, <clears throat> excuse me, as I stated earlier, my my view on this has to do with consistency of enforcement uh, of our rules. And, and I frequently hear from small business people who wish they had more signs, who wish they could have bigger signs and all that kind of stuff. I and mean, we don't routinely offer variances to, to small businesses. That just doesn't happen. But, and so that's the reason for my position on this. But in a larger sense, this does definitely affect traffic. The reason the modern drive-through wants two lanes is to move more people through faster, and it, therefore they can accommodate more cars. So it actually bears directly on the traffic issue, I think. I just thought I'd throw that in. Any other comments? All in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 All opposed, like sign. Aye. The motion carries five to two. Council, those are the, that's the only public... Okay, let's do that again. All in favor, please raise your hand. All opposed, like sign. You trying to say I can't count? I don't know, you got it. You got it. <laughs> that was the only public hearing that we had tonight. Um, the next item of business is under new business, and it's the boards and commissions. Okay. All right. Um, all right, uh, members of council, we need to select some folks to interview for the airport authority. Now, we, due to our um, sort of ridiculous schedule, we cannot um, interview anyone until May. So there were two late applicants who I don't think are on your list. Maggie, is that right that the two late applicants Okay, there's two late applicants that are not on your list, but the boards and commissions um, decided to consider them uh, anyway because this is a lengthy process. So we're recommending that we interview the two applicants that applied uh, after this was posted, and one of them is uh, Doug Tate and the other, Maggie, can you remind me? Philip Kelly. Philip Kelly. And then in addition, there, um, we, we would recommend interviewing Grant Osborne. And if anybody wanted, the, Grant Osborne was the only, those three were the additional applicants since we advertised this last time. Well, I'm supportive of also interviewing um, Dr. Anderson. Anyone else have someone? George Lichen. Okay. John Haler. Okay, we're gonna be, this will be a process. All right, anyone else? Okay, all right, so we'll interview the six. Six for one position? What are you trying to say? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I think we have to get this right. Um, we do, it's tricky. We've uh, learned the hard way of narrowing it down, in my opinion, in the past of not taking our time, and so this one I'd rather get it right and take a little time with them. Those interviews, I believe, will be held on May 14, and as soon as I get up with, get up with those folks, I'll let y'all know what time. Okay. Um, the Citizen Police Advisory Committee wanted to, us to re-advertise, and we were in agreement with that, unless anyone has an objection to that. And then we have um, two folks that we recommended I think it was two that we recommended interviewing for the neighborhood advisory committee. It's okay. Uh, Amy Evans and Spencer Hardaway. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. I misplaced my notes. Amy um, Evans and Spencer Hardaway. And then we're going to have to advertise for another vacancy on this one as well in a different geographical region. 
Okay. Any anyone? What's the different region? Uh, well, this one that we're talking about right now tonight is um, 03. Is that correct? 28804. And the next one will be 28801. Right. Okay. Okay. And does it, is that all right? Anyone want to add anyone else to the Neighborhood Advisory Committee? This one vacancy? No? All right. Okay, so that's it. Now, um, the Multimodal Transportation Commission, we have Kathy Ball to come explain this to us because the um, attached report to your agenda has been tweaked slightly and Kathy is going to um, display the latest iteration of this concept and explain it to us. This is not an item we're voting on tonight, just a presentation opportunity to ask some questions. Mayor, Vice Mayor, members of City Council, um, as you know, we have uh, recently had um, a, a, a reorganization within the City Department to put more focus and emphasis on multimodal transportation. And I've been fortunate enough to become the, um, the Executive Director of Public Works and Multimodal Transportation. So in an effort to um, um, complement the internal staff reorganization, we've looked at the boards and commissions set up so that we could be able to get feedback from our citizen groups and advisory groups. As a result of doing that, we took a, we took a look at some opportunity to be able to take and implement, um, and number one is to, to look at reducing the number of boards and commissions, but have them focus on looking at multimodal transportation issues as opposed to just single uh, transportation issues. Uh, in doing that, um, we went to each of these commissions um, and had discussions about what some of their concerns were about uh, changing this. And I'll just real briefly go through what some of those changes are. At the top level, you see uh, that it says that this is what would be proposed, um, that there would be a transit subcommittee, a bike and ped task force, and a greenway subcommittee that three members of each of those groups would make up the voting members of a uh, multimodal transportation commission. So each of those three groups would recommend members to city council and then city council would review those and um, either approve or deny them being a part of the multimodal commission. We also felt like it was important to get other groups at least um, linked in to what was happening at that multimodal level as non-voting um, ex officio members um, so that they could take information back on what the city's views and visions were on being able to utilize multimodal transportation as a good business model as well as cutting down on congestion and, and the many other uh, options that it provides for us. So the recommendation is that a member of Planning and Zoning Commission uh, the Sustainability Advisory Committee and the Neighborhood Advisory Commission would have a non-voting uh, ex officio member on the, the um, Multimodal Transportation Commission. Um, the, the, both the Transit and the Greenway, which are currently commissions, would become subcommittees and while they would receive technical support and attendance at meetings, we wouldn't staff the meetings in terms of taking minutes or doing the agenda um, and so that would that would be able to reduce some of the staff reliance on the, the, the commission's reliance upon staff. And I would be happy to hear from members of the the boards and committees uh, council committee on this, or answer any questions that you have. Councilman Hunt. Um, I assume that what we're talking about here is an ordinance that is perhaps yet to be drafted that would create this commission and um, so there will be some formality to it and at that point the transit commission and the greenway commission the, the ordinances that provide for those would be undone or or left behind um wait hold on what do you mean undone well, the, those, the, there would be no Greenway Commission and there would be no Transit Commission afterwards. So the current ordinances that establish those would be removed, Bob? I don't know the technical term for what would happen to those ordinances that are currently in place that establish. Repealed. They'd be repealed. Decommissioned. Repealed. Although the boards would still exist and function. Well, I, it, it would be my suggestion, Kathy, and I, I, I may have said this in an email, and I'm very interested in this, that Today, um, 
there are these distinct different groups that meet regularly. When the Multimodal com uh, Commission comes into being, those subcommittees may or may not have traction to stick around. So I, to me, um, the, these subcommittees perhaps should be the decision and authorization of the future multimodal commission. They, they might come and go. They might have no effect. The, the original appointments to, to, the, to the multimodal commission, are, you know, coming from recommendations to those three groups, I totally support. But to rely on those three subcommittees being functional, having enough traction to come up with three candidates for reappointments and all. I just, I worry that that's too much structure, too much reliance on the existence of subcommittees. I, having been on a, a commission myself and, a lot, and, and lots of structure in nonprofits, subcommittees often kind of fade away or change shapes. And in particular, the Bike and Ped Task Force and the Greenway Commission or Greenway Committee have a lot of overlap. There's a, there's a real spectrum of, from sidewalks to bike paths to multi-use paths to greenways, and different people call them the same looking thing, different names, and I, I just think there's gonna be a blending and merging of, of bike and pet facilities, and the distinction between greenways and, other, and bike lanes is gonna disappear, and so that's my spiel. I, flexibility and, and lower, um, lower, less structure, but providing that commi commission the flexibility to create subcommittees would seem important. And, so, and I, th oh, well, I was just going to clarify, so explain how that would work exactly differently from what's being presented. Well, it, it's been unclear, there's been some email traffic, it, it's been unclear whether the three subcommittees would be formalized and required under the ordinance or not. And I'm just I'm just suggesting, You're suggesting they should be. No, I'm suggesting it, that that it should be at the pleasure of the multimodal commission to establish whatever subcommittees that it deems that it deems necessary. Because these these uses and the def, definition of of different forms of multimodal trans, transportation will evolve over time. I, I see. Confident. I wasn't understanding what you were saying. I'm sorry. Do I'm, you want that designated in any proposed ordinance? Is that what you're saying? Just some broad language that says. They, that the Multimodal Transportation Commission has the authority to designate uh, subcommittees from time I to do. time, I, or I, whatever, whatever the language might be. I do, and, I, and to, to, to my colleagues, I mean, I've, I've been very active on this front. To the, all the people that serve on those committees, this is not about uh, diminishing people's roles. I hope that they are strong subcommittees and stay functional, but we need flexibility to let them evolve and adapt. And, and I think in my, in, in my um, I guess, intent to be quick with my presentation, I may have, I think I failed to relay to you all that I have met extensively with the chairs of those groups and with each of them to kind of address the issue of making sure that those subcommittees are um, exist and do provide meaningful input to the city in making decisions. The example I would use is that the, the city, there are several requirements if the city has a transit commission that have to be met um, through the federal government in, or, in order for us to receive funding, as, such as the makeup of that group. Um, so I fail to, to say that one of the recommendations is that on an ongoing basis that the members of the subcommittee, with the exception of the bike and ped, which kind of operates on its own, but both with the greenway and the transit, when, when positions become vacant, that people would submit their applications to this um, multimodal transportation commission for appointment so that we continue to make sure those groups are balanced and that they are appointed members. Um, some of the concern is if people aren't appointed to a subcommittee, they, they don't tend to regularly show up. They don't tend to give as good an input. So what we will try to do is when we write up this ordinance is to include that structure so that folks feel comfortable that that role is not being diminished. Okay, and so this was just an update, Vice Mayor? That's right. This, this was just an update, and we're not voting on this yet. This was an opportunity to give any, give, get, present any questions or concerns. All right, that's it. That's conclusion. All right, Council, that's all for our printed agenda. Any member of the community wishing to address Council at this time? All right. 
we will um, take a motion to go into closed session at this time. Councilman Pelley. Uh, Mayor, I move that uh, Asheville City Council go into closed session for the following reason. One, to consult with an attorney employed by the city about matters with respect to which the attorney-client privilege between the city and its attorney must be preserved, including potential litigation. The statutory authorization is contained in GS 143-318.11A3. Two, to prevent disclosure <coughs> of information that is privileged and confidential pursuant to the laws of North Carolina or not considered a public record within the meaning of Chapter 132 of the General Statutes. The law that makes the information privileged and confidential is NCGS 143-318.10E. The statutory authorization is contained in GS, NCGS 143-318.11A1. Second. The motion has been made and properly seconded. Any further questions or comments? Excuse me. All in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed, like sign. The motion carries. We will adjourn from the closed session and do not anticipate any announcements at the end. Thank you. We're in closed session.